Story number two is a story actually about a sales rep. It's about Greg. Greg is a young, ambitious sales rep who just joined uh, another successful company and um, established company already, um, known on the market. And Greg is very, very happy to be able to join this company, to, been, to have been selected by this company. And uh, he's working hard. The first weeks he joins this new company, he's working hard, he's trying to uh, learn as fast as he can. And after a few weeks, first month actually in this company, true story, I got it from Greg myself. Uh, Greg gets a CEO call with one of their top prospective accounts. CEO call, visit at the CEO level. So Greg, of course, calls his sales manager immediately and says, hey, I've got this call. I'm going to meet this CEO in uh, about two or three weeks. And uh, I need somebody to match that guy, right? And the sales manager is like, oh my God, you got to call with this guy? We need to call at least the uh, divisional vice president because this is an account we're trying to break into for a long time. This is great, Greg. What you did was great. We need to, we need to escalate this sale at the divisional vice president level. And Greg gets, oh my God, that's great. And uh, the divisional vice president is coming with Greg to go to that call. Three weeks later, and Greg gets everything under control, confirms the meeting, gets a different call with the executive assistant, makes sure everybody is on, aligned on both ends, gets the objective of the meeting ready, the executive call sheet ready, sends that to the divisional vice president, everything is ready, the meeting is reconfirmed the week before, the day before. The day before, Greg gets a call from the divisional vice president from his own company who tells him that because that call is so important, because this is an account they've tried to break into for such a long time, they have decided that actually the CEO of Greg's company is going to go there. The CEO of Greg's company is going to go help Greg on that call. CEO to CEO. What better match is there? So Greg is like, oh my God, I get the CEO of my own company that just joined a month ago to come with me. This is great. This is great. And the following day, so he tells the customer that actually there's a CEO of his own company moves himself, decides himself to come to join this meeting, very important meeting for both companies to align their strategies together so that they can do business together. And the following day, Greg goes, you know where, how, the, how, the, how the story follows, right? If you've been in sales long enough, you know what's going to happen. Well, you don't. The following day, Greg meets his CEO for the first time at the airport because the CEO flew in with his private jet. So Greg meets the CEO, they talk in the taxi about the objective of the call, make sure they understand each other, what the goal is. You know, Greg tells him about all the discussion he's had with the customer, the executive secretary, what their strategy is, why they're interested in meeting them, everything. And they arrive at the customer, they go to the top floor, they sit. And they sit for five minutes. They sit for maybe ten minutes. After fifteen minutes, Greg gets a little nervous. And the executive assistant actually is making some calls, and she opens the door, she comes back, and after twenty minutes, Greg is very nervous. And the executive assistant comes in, and sure enough, she tells them, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry, but Mr. CEO had an emergency. He won't be able to uh, sit with you today. He's gone off to a different country, whatever. And Greg, at that moment, Greg thinks, Oh, I just lost my job. But the executive assistant carries on and says, well, Mr. Number Two will be with you in a minute. Please follow me to the meeting room. So Greg follows Richard, the CEO of his company, to that meeting room and doesn't really know what to think except he lost his job. 
and Mr. Number 2 joins, and after 5 minutes, it's obvious Mr. Number 2 is not even Mr. Number 3, 4. He's just here to fill the hole. And if you've been in the sales long enough, you know these situations, you've lived at least one of them. So Greg, after five minutes in the meeting, listening to Mr. Number Two and Richard talking, realizes that he probably, his not only has he lost his job, he's probably lost his reputation. He probably needs to move out of Texas. The story took place in Texas. And uh, he actually started thinking, maybe I should actually move to Europe. That's how I met Greg, by the way. Anyway, meeting goes on, and Greg doesn't say much, and Mr. Number Two doesn't say much, but Richard, Richard starts talking. After they, you know, introduced each other, Richard presents his company, starts presenting the strategy, then starts presenting his lines of business, starts presenting the history of his company, and Richard is very passionate about his company, and he presents how long they've been in business and why they've been successful and how they've been successful with other companies just like this company and how they added value to them and he presents all the new product lines they're now going to market with and they just came out with a new services organization and they can now do customer service, they can do consulting before uh, the, the solution is, is actually in place and he describes everything and Richard is very passionate about his employees and he tells him how many employees he's going to hire next year and how they're going to buy this company and they're going to acquire that company because they're manufacturing widgets that just complement the widgets that this company is doing and how the whole solution is going to add more value to this company. And Richard is, goes on and on and on and the, the meeting lasts like almost an hour. And at the end of the meeting, they all shake hands and they leave and Greg doesn't know what to think, but he's going back in the taxi with Richard, and he just begins to start, Hey, I'm sorry, Mr. Richard, I apologize. Don't apologize, says Richard. This was a great call. Greg says, What do you mean this was a great call? It's, you know, it's obvious Mr. Number Two, you know, was not even... And Richard says, Well, you know, I know. I saw you did your job. I saw you did everything. The CEO, I'll remember that guy, I can tell you that. But... I know you did your share, and we'll meet him again anyway, now that we've introduced each other, and this was a great call for me. It's been a long time I hadn't been able to coach one of our future very successful sales rep. And Greg looks at Richard and then realizes the whole meeting, the whole presentation was for him. Greg told me that story about seven years ago. He had then become not only a successful sales rep, but a successful sales manager. He actually at that time just moved in an area manager, sales manager's manager position. Um, that was Greg's story, or Richard's story actually. Now, this is all about sales management. We're going to spend the next two days um, talking about how to become a successful sales manager.